Hey guys, this is Steve Reeder with SAPT, and today I'd like to provide some tips on injury reduction strategies for rugby players. Now, even though today's discussion revolves around rugby, recognize that a lot of the tips I'm going to provide uh, can apply to the entire sphere and spectrum of field athletes and just movement quality as a whole. So, uh, the first tip for rugby players with trying to reduce the risk of injuries they experience on the field, this one's pretty scientific, is don't be stupid. So don't be stupid in your training. Uh, when you're strength training, don't progress too fast too soon. Lift with good technique. Monitor your training stressors so that you're not doing too much in the weight room and too much on the field. So when you're when you're say when you're in season or when you're practicing playing more, take down a little bit the volume and intensity of your strength training. And then if you increase the volume or intensity of your strength training, uh, decrease uh, just how frequently you're playing, running, sprinting, and hitting one another. So that's the number one is just don't be stupid, use good technique and make sure you're monitoring all your stressors in a given week both inside and outside uh, the, the gym walls. So uh, number two, uh, strength training. So I, I hope this one goes without saying, but strength training. If you have two athletes of equal skill and size and they collide on the rugby field, one can deadlift and squat 400 pounds, the other can deadlift and squat 200 pounds, which one do you think is going to have a greater risk of getting hurt? probably the one who can only squat and deadlift 200 pounds. So strength training will just make your body more structurally sound as a whole. And again, I hope that one goes without saying, uh, but I think it needs to be said regardless. So some tools for strength training. I prioritize your compound lifts, your squats, your deadlifts, your presses, your rows, and then uh, place a, a lesser emphasis on single joint movements, you know, such as like a, a bicep curl. It can still still be important, especially, especially for rug rugby players who you know, cradle the ball in their arms and to develop connective tissue quality uh, around your joints. But prioritize your big lifts, uh, that'll get you stronger, more structurally sound as a whole, and then you can still, uh, you know, do a little bit of the same joint movement stuff. So that's one side of the strength training token uh, or within the, the gym. The, the other side of that token would be practicing deceleration and movement training concomitantly with your strength training. So. You can get your squat really high, you can get your deadlift really high, you can strengthen your glutes, strengthen your hamstrings, but if you're not learning to decelerate, if you're not landing how to change directions in an efficient and not very risky manner, then you can be shooting yourself in the foot to some extent. So tying the two together in your strength training, prioritize uh, things along the posterior chain, such as your glutes and hamstrings. The glutes, to a large extent, are going to control where the knee goes. So if your glutes are weak, that's when you're going to want to, that's when you're going to see the knee caving in and a lot of those mechanisms of ACL tears or other knee injuries that we come across that are so prominent in field athletes. So get the glutes and hamstrings stronger, but then tie that newfound strength in with movement training drills. So this could be an entire hour-long workshop in and of itself. Uh, but just a, a couple tips for today. First, learn how to decelerate properly and don't progress your, your plyos too quickly. We see a number of professional and Division I level athletes who come in here and they think they're really advanced in the, in the plyometric you know, side of the spectrum just because they've, they've been doing a lot of really advanced bounding drills and, and single leg jump drills when really they're not quite prepared for it yet. So you take something like a, a, as simple as a single leg lateral cone knock You'll see a lot of people when they do it, they'll hop over and they just kind of land real rigid on each hop. And when you do this, you're not learning to use your hips to decelerate at all. So instead, concentrate on learning to get back into your hip, extend at the top, and then get back into your hip on the landing. So extend up, sit back into the hip, extend up, get back into the hip, learning to control your knee in, in three planes of motion. So, it's actually really surprising how many people really struggle with that simple drill, you know, not even going super high over a hurdle. But we see a number of people who go to do that for the first time, and as soon as they try and actually use their hips to decelerate, they're kind of all over the place where they continue to fall over that way. So again, practice your motor, your motor control training alongside your strength training to learn how to use your butt outside of the context of just squatting and deadlifting and doing RDLs and lunging and all those other exercises that are really awesome in their own right. Um, so then, you know, just don't progress too quickly too soon. Start with something like a cone hop with a stick, be it lateral, medial, jumping toward the 
the midline of the body or linear, going front to back. And then, once you're ready, you can progress to more of your reactive hops, where you're going really quickly along the line. But again, you're not doing yourself any favors if you progress too quickly too soon. So, once you're able to do something, just a, a hop with a stick landing, learning how to use your, your hips to decelerate, then you can progress into more change of direction work, be it you know, sprinting or lateral down variations. And one thing that we see a lot of people do when our, our field athletes come in and we do our initial assessment with them, for the ones that are ready for it, we'll time their 5 10 5 drill, we'll, we'll time some different movement drills just to use as metrics for their progress throughout their time with us. But one thing we see time and time again with people who their times are slower, they're not as proficient at changing directions, is say they're just doing a simple side shuffle over the right coming back. People who are slower, and by extension, a lot of times would be more prone to injury, when they go to change directions on that turnaround, they'll have their inside leg to the outside of their shoulder. So they go, and then when they turn to plant and change directions, they're going to pull with that back leg. So one thing you can practice or have your athletes practice is when you go to change directions, make sure this inside foot is to the inside of your shoulder so then you're ready to push off to go back in the other direction. Um, kind of on that same side of the coin, if you're practicing lateral bound, you'll see a lot of people where, or um, a number of folks call them high ends as well, when they go to do a high end, you watch them land with their knee way to the outside of their foot. So they jump, and they're here, and then they can't slow down. So what you actually want to do is land with that knee a little bit to the inside of the foot. So you'll go, and actually land with that knee to the inside of the foot, so then you're ready to go right back and change directions. And again, that's that's going to be something. Excuse me, that's going to be something you're going to want to progress up to, so you can actually use your glutes and hamstrings, the active supports of of your knee and your hips, to change directions, and then or to slow down, change directions, and go back the other way. So I hope those are I hope those are some tips that y'all can take away and start applying today with either yourself or your athletes, and that's it.